what's it all about. America, Jesus, and freedom. Say it again. America, Jesus, and freedom. And what does that mean? I don't know, but the people sure love it when I say it. Hello all, this is Lawrence one more time. I'm going to go ahead and explain how X always marks the spot of the treasure. And I'll try to do my best to explain what the treasure is. Let's get started. One thing to note is wherever there's a treasure, you'll find pirates. Which probably explains the popularity of all these pirate movies. And perhaps you remember a time in your life where people were using the X in place of Christ uh, to wish you a Merry Christmas or Merry Xmas. And that caused a lot of debate because people would say something to the effect of Christ cannot be replaced by an X or you're trying to take the Christ out of Christmas. However, at one time in history, this was an accepted practice as the word Christ. It was an abbreviation and it had nothing to do with trying to minimize Christ. So X actually can equate to Christ. Very interesting. And even more recently, the popularity of the X-Men movies took off like a rocket and we get to see the main character which was Wolverine. Wolverine is an X-Men with six claws. Six is the number of man, or 666 is the number of man, per the Bible. Tying together the 666 and X-Man concept would be Beast, uh, which is played by Kelsey Grammer, who is uh, wrapped up in a lot of drug uh, problems earlier in his career, and he's, he represents the Beast, the X-Man. So taking a look at the entire group of X-Men, you have Storm, who represents thunder and lightning and electricity. You have Wolverine, who's a bit like a wolf, but he has six claws. And then you have the Beast, of course, but you also have a, a new character who is the Angel. That's in case we couldn't all figure it out on our own. They're putting it together very nicely in a package for us. And in 2016, it seems that they're going to be releasing yet another X-Men movie called X-Men Apocalypse. And they're struggling to let go of the whole angel theme. And perhaps the most intense X-Men of them all is Jean Grey who struggles with uh, holding back her powers. She could basically move anything she needs to, all matter, which is a real problem for all the other X-Men. Encoded right in front of us is her name, which is Jean Grey. Jean as in DNA, Grey as in Grey Aliens. She is the personification of alien DNA. She struggles the most with her anger only because she is the phoenix that's rising from the ashes. She is the evolved beast, what happens after the beastly nature is put to death. So what's this all about? This is actually about the ascension, which involves the kundalini, which involves the rising of your chakras, the energy systems in your body. So that brings us to the next character, which is Quicksilver, which is Marvel's answer to Flash. So it's interesting also to note that although um, Quicksilver is very fast, his name equates to Mercury. So they were used to call Mercury Quicksilver. 
So here's a depiction of Mercury holding the Staff of Ascension in his hands. See, there's a very complex alchemical process that the body goes through that could it be explained very simply through symbology. And that is why Mercury carries the caduceus, otherwise known as the medical symbol, in his hand as he flies around like an angel. The word angel actually means messenger, so Mercury is the messenger. And that is why the 1940s version of the Flash looks like Mercury. Then of course you have Malcolm X from the mid 60s. He became a uh, fighter for human rights. He became a um, central figure in the fight for human rights in the mid 60s. The word Malcolm actually means disciple of Columbia. And X of course means Christ. So his name literally means disciple of Columbia who has been christened. So who is Columbia? Columbia is the female goddess of illumination. You might know her as Lady Liberty or the Statue of Liberty. She is a representation of the light bearer or Lucifer. And of course, who could forget the X-Files? with Fox Mulder, who is the conspiracy theorist who does stops at nothing to prove that the truth is out there. And of course, in Freemasonry code, Fox equates to 666, the human number, the number of the beast. And I had to include Charles Manson. The name Charlie means free man. Last name Manson means son of man. So Charlie carves a cross or an X in his forehead to symbolize that his pineal gland is the mansion of the free man. And of course, there's the triple X. Triple X symbolizes three crosses thrown on their side, which represent Golgotha, where Jesus was crucified, otherwise known as the place of the skull. The place of the skull is where the pineal gland resides. Out in California, we have the world famous LAX. LA stands for Los Angeles or City of Angels. X stands for Christ. So when you see LAX, what you're really seeing is the words City of Christ's Angels, which happens to be an airport where things fly in and out of. Wonder what we're going to be seeing flying in and out of LAX soon. Another very important part of California culture is In-N-Out Hamburger. The owner encodes scriptures on the inside of his packaging of the hamburgers and fries. He happens to know that there is a great treasure, which is why each and every restaurant has palm trees in the shape of an X right in front. And then you have the famous Excalibur the unstoppable sword of salvation. We must all go on a quest for the great treasure. Then we have the punk band Generation X with lead singer Billy Idol. Billy Idol had a great hit called White Wedding. See, we're all heading towards the White Wedding where we become the bridegroom of God himself. And that is why Billy Idol, the punk rocker, felt it important to cut a Christmas album or an Xmas album. 
Whether we like it or not, we are the last great generation. We are Generation X. What's it all about? America, Jesus, and freedom. Say it again. America, Jesus, 